Now today I wanted to talk about electrical problems. These electrical problems are going to affect all kinds of motors, all kinds of electrical components. But one of the questions that I always ask in class is how many electrical problems are there? Typically the students will say, well, there are a lot. There are a lot of questions, there are a lot of problems. So what I typically tell them is that there are really only three, open, short, and ground. That's really about it. There really isn't much else. And when you look at all the electrical problems that you have, they all come down to that one same thing. Whether you're talking about a motor, a compressor, a capacitor, it's going to be one of those three problems. First of all, let's talk about, uh, let's say, a short. Okay? What is a short? Let's say that I have a piece of wire. This piece of wire happens to be, let's say, 100 feet in length. 100 feet. But then I'm going to take it and I'm going to coil it up. Once I coil it up, I end up with just a small coil of wire. Okay, so once I've done that, I have my wire like this, and it's going to be just like this. And just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to say that when I check from here to, let's say, here, I'm going to get a total of 100 ohms, 100 ohms, just like that, okay? But then I'm gonna take a small piece of wire, just a little piece of wire, like, like a paper clip or something, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna put it between here and here. So in other words, in that coil that I have, I'm gonna just jump it and I will be jumping through there 25, 25 uh, feet because 25 feet, I just took away 25 ohms. Because I took away 25 ohms, now I'm going to have how much? Now I'm going to have 75, 75 ohms between here and this one right here. 75 ohms right there. So with a manufacturer, when they made this motor, let's say it's a motor, they said, okay, with 100 ohms, we're going to have this motor draw 5 amps. So now it's drawing 5 amps and everything's running wonderful, everything's beautiful. What happens now is, because I put this jumper on here, or in other words, I took away 25 feet, or in other words, I removed 25 ohms of resistance, I have less resistance, which means that my amperage can get through there much easier can get through there much better, much faster. So now it's going to draw, let's say, 10 amps. My amperage went up. Now, anytime amperage goes up, two things tend to happen. One of them is the strength of the magnetic field, which we will talk about in a different video. But in this video, let's talk about the other thing, which is the amount of heat. The amount of heat increases. So in other words, this motor is going to start to heat up. It's going to heat up and heat up and heat up. But let's say that I'm not satisfied with this and I want to mess with it some more. So I go ahead and I take off another 25 feet. Because I took away another 25 feet, what happened to my resistance right here? My resistance here, it just dropped down to 50 ohms of resistance. Because of that, my amperage now is going to do what? my amperage is going to go up. So let's say that this goes up to 15 amps. Let's just say that. I have a shorter path because I have a shorter path. I have less resistance, which means that it can flow through there much faster. When that happens, well, my amperage goes up. My amperage increases. And again, the strength of the magnetic field increases and the amount of heat. So now my motor is getting much, much warmer. Then, let's say that we go from here to approximately right there. So in other words, I take away another 25 feet. Once I take away another 25 feet, here my resistance is going to drop down to 25 ohms. Once that happens, my amperage is going to go up again. Let's just say, for example, this example, let's say, is going to go up to 20 amps. What just happened to my motor? my motor heated up even more. It heated up even more, so now 
my motor's really, really burning up. And wait a minute. What part of my motor is going to burn up? We always say that the motor burns up, but what part of it burns up? Well, first of all, it's not the bearings. Second of all, it can't be the rotor because it's just a hunk of metal. So could it be the wires and the windings? Well, we, so if it's the wires and the windings, it's not really the actual wire, it's not the copper wire, but it's the insulation. The insulation that's around the wire and that's what burns up. So we need to keep that in mind because let's say for example that if I was to, let's see, take that motor and I cut it. Once I cut that motor and we're looking at the windings, we're going to see something that looks like this. So now what happens here as this heats up, these are the windings, the black dots, those are going to be the, uh, that's the actual copper wire. The blue that you see here, all the circles, that is the insulation that is around the the copper wire. So what happens is as it heats up, this insulation breaks down and these two copper wires are going to touch. Because of that, what was it that we just did? We created a very, very small short like this. If we were to create this short, well then, how many ohms would we have between here and, let's say, here? Well, let's say, for example, we would have a total of 99 ohms. Now, if we have 99 ohms, do we have a short? Yes, we do. Are we going to notice this? Not really, because now my amperage, instead of being 5 amps, this amperage might go up to, let's say, 5.1. I don't know, just making it up. But very little is going to go up very, very little. So we won't really notice. So let's say that for whatever reason, these two touch. When those two touch, now we just shorten it even more. Because of that, we end up with, let's say, a total of 98 ohms like this. Well, now what has happened? My amperage is going to go up slightly. So let's say this goes up to 5 point, let's say, 1 or 2 or 3, okay? It went up a little bit. Are we going to notice that? No, not really. But eventually, the more connections that we have inside of here, the greater the short that we're going to have. Because that's what a short is when we shorten the path. Whether we shorten it by <clears throat> 1 ohm or 2 ohms or 25 ohms, we still have a short. And this is all bad. Now, <clears throat> when we have a very slight short, it's not going to affect us that much, but we still have a problem. Let's say that you have a motor that you just paid $600 for. Do you want this motor to fail on you, you know, prematurely? No, you don't. We definitely don't want to do that. One of the things that we could do is to check the amperage. When we first install it, you check the amperage to see what the amperage is. The other thing that I always suggest is check the, check the resistance. See what the manufacturer says that the resistance should be. Now, this is a brand new motor, so you should have the correct resistance. Depending on the size of the motor, you can come back and a year later. Check the resistance. If the resistance is still the same, then you know your motor is doing well. If your resistance starts to drop and drop and drop, then you know you're having problems with the motor and you may need to order another motor and have it handy <clears throat> so that when this motor fails, you can go ahead and replace it. Now, the smart thing to do would be to keep track of what the amperage is and what the resistance is. And then you can plan to replace this motor on a weekend when there's no one in the building. So now you can say, okay, you know, where the amperage keeps going up, and by checking the resistance, we see that we are developing a short. So this weekend, we're going to change it, and the motor will not fail when you need it the most. Because when is it that most things will fail? Most equipment will fail when we need it the most. 
So we don't want that to happen. By doing this, you can keep an eye on it and you can replace it sooner or you can replace it when you need to. Now, granted, you're not going to do these checks when you have a motor that you, let's say for a condenser fan motor, in which you pay, let's say $100 for or $90 for. You may not want to go through all of this, but when you have an expensive motor, let's say a three-phase motor, yes, you do want to check the amperage and, and the resistance on all three legs. Write them down, keep a log of that, so you see how the problems are developing slowly and slowly, and you can do something about it. So let's talk about this again. We said that a short is when you shorten the path, whether it is by one or two ohms, or let's say 25 ohms, 20 ohms, 10 ohms, you still have a short. So that is a short. When you shorten the path, the only way to know that you're shortening the path is by checking your resistance, by checking the ohms. And what are you going to compare it to? Hopefully with what the original reading was. If you don't have the original reading, then hopefully you will have a motor by the same model number, same manufacturer, and then you can check the resistance on that and compare that to what you have. But these are all things that you might want to do to a brand new motor. And again, depending on the size of it, if it's a large motor, you would definitely want to do this. Keep an eye on it so it doesn't fail you, fail on you. So I hope this helped. And remember, a short is when you shorten the path. And the only way to know it is by checking your ohms or your resistance. Now, my name's Julio. I'm with Aircon Academy. Please make sure you follow me on Facebook, subscribe to my channel on YouTube, and if you have any suggestions, uh, send me a message, and I'll see what I can do. Thank you.